Final Audio is a Japanese brand that does not get the fanfare or marketing of its Western rivals. Marketing, advertisements, reviews, and product placements is easy to find for Odyssey, Bear Dynamics, Sennheiser, Audio Technica, and others, but Final Audio is typically in the outskirts. Final Audio has a lot of IEMs and headphones of various designs. Their website is confusing, and navigating among their products can be a, a little frustrating. But they do have some interesting stuff. I once owned the Sonorous 6, but sold it due to its uncomfortable fit. But I've always wanted to give Final Audio headphones another spin. I asked Audio 46 if I could borrow the Sonorous 3, and they obliged. This is a $400 headphone that is currently on sale at Audio 46 for $300. What can this Japanese product do at this price bracket? The Sonorous 3 is a closed back over ear headphone. Final Audio uses what they call BAM, B A M, or balancing air movement. They claim that this BAM design balances pressure between the front and back of the diaphragm. This in turn should present deep bass with 3D spatial representation. Final Audio says that the Sonorous will present clear, transparent sound combined with a vast soundstage. They say this headphone will faithfully reproduce the source music. There's some contradictory marketing with the Sonorous. For example, Final Audio says that the Sonorous 3 has a quote, natural flatness, and that it has a monitor-like sound, and that it has balanced sound signature. Ultimately, Final Audio doesn't really say anything helpful about the Sonorous 3. There's some indication that this headphone should have deep, resonating bass, but the rest of its marketing is murky or contradictory. I guess we will have to figure this out by ourselves. All of Final Audio's headphones have a distinctive look. It's simplistic, yet elegant in design. To some, it will look ugly, but the functionality is easy to see. The Sonorous 3 is made of ABS plastic and metal. The plastic is rather sturdy and dense. I was a bit surprised by its rigidity and apparent strength. There's some texture to the plastic. The headband is metal, and some of the internal components are metal as well. The ear pads and headband padding are synthetic leather. Final Audio says they purposefully used synthetic leather to optimize their chosen tuning. There are two standout design features of this headphone. The first is the ear cup movement mechanism. The ear cups are essentially mounted on a ball. This allows them to fully move up, down, left, right, back, and forth. This is a design I have not seen replicated by any other headphone manufacturer. The mechanism has plenty of tension to not allow the ear cups to haphazardly flop around, but are loose enough to move with little effort. The second standout design is the height adjustment of the ear cups. Typically, headphones have headbands that extend. The Sonorous, however, has a single piece of metal in the headband. That metal slides through a retaining clamp that is attached to the ear cups. This allows the ear cups to move up and down independently. Both of these design characteristics makes the Sonorous one of the most customizable headphones I have used. No matter your head shape or size, this headphone will let you get a precise fit. The headphone itself comes with incredibly minimalistic packaging. There's no carrying bag or protective case, no flashy inner box, and the headphones themselves aren't protected in plastic. You get one set of ear pads, one cable, and one quarter inch adapter. That's it. The cable, to my surprise, is a very pliable one. It's not sheathed in Kevlar or any other noise-carrying material. The cable itself is soft and terminates in metal connectors. As for comfort, I found that the Sonorous 3 was easy to adjust for my head and ear placement. I can feel the headband pressure on top of my head, but I never felt that this was discomfortable. The ear pads are circular, but my ears easily fit within them. I could wear the Sonorous 3 for 3-4 three to four hours without difficulty. Overall, the Sonorous 3 has laughably little in packaging and accessories, particularly for its price, but what it does provide is noteworthy. The headphone is well built and sturdy, its adjustability is laudable, the cable is supple, the headphone is comfortable to me. This, I think, is a good start. 
To test the Sonorous 3, I used it with numerous devices. This included my Army ADI-2 DAC, my Enmodi Liquid Spark SAC, the iFi Zen DAC, and the Sony NWZX507. I used the stock accessories. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. The Sonorous 3 is a very sensitive headphone. It's got an impedance of 16 ohms and sensitivity of 105 decibels. This means that you do not need any special amplification. Plug it straight into your phone's headphone jack, if it still has one. Using a moderately powerful amplifier tends to bring a minor difference in clarity. Final Audio has some vague comments about the Sonorous 3's bass. From my tests, it appears that this headphone has a marginal sub-bass roll-off and a close to neutral mid-bass. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there's a rumble from the beginning of the track. The Sonorous did present this detail, but sounded a little distant, and it was slightly underemphasized. Transients was faster than what I heard on the Aluario S4X, and it was somewhat similar to the Aventone Planar. When the crescendo hit, the organ cut through the other instruments. The rolling thunder effect was audible, but distant, lacking reverberation. There was average instrument separation. When the vocals chimed in, they rose from the background until they were shoulder to shoulder with the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble sound at the beginning. This is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The Sonorous presented the sound of rolling marbles and some of the panning. There are multiple drums in this track and the Sonorous let me hear all of them. Drum strikes were hard, impactful, but not piercing. There was some melding between one drum strike and the next. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. In each song, the Sonorous made the sub-bass sound underemphasized. The subwoofer sounded like it was in another room. The drums were easily audible, however. Vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments and retained their sparkle. I listened to my Sicario playlist. I use these songs to determine if there is any audible bass distortion. I listen from low to excessively loud just to put the drivers through a stress test. The Sonorous 3 exhibited no distortion. Overall, the Sonorous 3 has a marginal roll-off in the sub-bass but a fairly neutral mid-bass. Transients is faster than some other dynamic drivers and reminds me a little bit of planar rendition. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is good, resulting in at least average clarity in the bass region. Final Audio doesn't say anything about the mids response. My tests indicate that the Sonorous 3 has forward mids. In Orla Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, the track has natural vocal grain and sibilance mixed in. The Sonorous accentuated both. The vocal grain and sibilance was slightly greater than what I heard on the Allo Audio S4X. The Aventone Planar was neutral. The sibilance never became harsh or piercing and certainly nothing like the HD560S. The vocals were two steps ahead of instruments. There was some melding between the drums and the guitar, but I could easily hear their individual tonalities. Timbre of instruments seemed correct. In Want You Back, the Sonorous again showed that it marginally accentuates female sibilance. It was slightly greater than the presentation of the Allo S4X. At 8 seconds into the song, the primary singer says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The Sonorous easily recreated this detail. There are two backup vocalists, and the Sonorous also clearly presented both of them with their individual tonalities. When the instruments played at maximum, I could still hear all three vocalists with a bit of concentration. The drums, piano, guitar, and bass all appeared to have correct timbre. Their notes tended to meld marginally. The bass seemed, again, underemphasized. In Superposition by Yan the Giant, the Sonorous 3 correctly recreate the ukulele and drums. The bass, however, seemed a bit distant and not fully presented. The primary male vocalist sounded smooth, but his sibilance was accentuated marginally. There's a bag of vocalists whose voice is layered beneath the primaries. Most headphones and IEMs cannot parse apart this detail. The Sonorous could not either. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are sharp intakes of breaths. The Sonorous 3 easily presented this detail. Overall, the mids are forward. Timbre of instruments seems to be accurate. Vocals are two steps ahead of instruments. There's little bass bleed into the mids, which means that vocals tend to sound a bit airy. Male and female vocals have accentuated sibilance. This emphasis is similar to that of the Allo S4X, except maybe just a little bit higher. There's also about average clarity and separation in the mids region. 
This results in instruments melding with each other slightly, but otherwise remaining distinct and clear. Final audio does not say anything meaningful about the treble on the Sonorous 3. My test suggests that this headphone has a slight emphasis in treble, starting around the mid-treble area. In Skirts for x wings the Sonorous was able to clearly present the brass and horns. These instruments retain their nasally signatures and cut through the other elements. I could hear group sets, but not individual instruments. The Timfati seemed a little underemphasized, but was still audible. There was good separation among group sets, allowing me to hear their various positions. This headphone seems to have depth and width, but no verticality. In other words, instruments may sound further out into the wings and in front or behind each other, but no sounds will come from above or below. In Flight from the City, the Sonorous made the piano sound like it was about 5 feet away. The bassy notes were underemphasized and had fast transients with minimal melding. I could hear the pops and sizzles and electric buzzing, details that are in the bottom layer of this track. The cello was smooth, clear, and marginally melding with the piano. I could hear the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. However, both details were a little veiled and did not jump out. In Take 5 by the De Brubeck Quartet, the Sonoras presented the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass a few steps behind. The saxophone sounded clear and smooth. There was good separation among all instruments, allowing me to concentrate on one element or another. The cymbals are struck at different positions, which should result in different tonalities. The Sonoris was able to render these minor changes, but I had to concentrate to hear it. The saxophone was one step ahead of the other instruments. Overall, the Sonoris 3 appears to have slightly elevated treble, but every treble instrument I heard sounded smooth. There was not a hint of harshness or piercing signature even at high volumes. The Sonoris has depth and width, but no verticality. Final Audio doesn't say anything about the Sonoris 3's detail abilities, but based on my experience, it seems to me that this headphone has about average detail retrieval. Multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, pops and sizzles, electric buzzing, sharp intakes of breaths, creaking of wood, different tonalities of cymbals. These are all details that the Sonoris 3 can recreate. Obvious details are easy to hear. Subtle details may or may not be clear. When I talk about detail retrieval, I use a quantitative scale. I listened to New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of wind, children playing, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. This is a test you can repeat without any special equipment or training. I encourage all of you to try it and find other recordings for similar tests. Anyway, let's first compare to other headphones. The Sennheiser HD800S presents 22 footsteps, the Focal Clear, 18, the Austrian Audio High X65, 16 to 17 footsteps, the Austrian Audio High X55, 16 footsteps, the Hi Fi Mansundara, Aventone Planar, Sifka Phoenix, and Bear Dynamic DT1990 each present 10 to 11 footsteps. The Odyssey LCD2 Closed and LCD2 Classic each provide 7 to 8. The Monolith M1070, M1570, Sifka Robin, and Ultrasound Pro 1480i all provide 8 to 9 footsteps. And, of course, the older M1060C provides 7 footsteps. The Odyssey LCD-1 and the HD6XX present 6 to 7 footsteps. The Neumann NDH20 presents 5 to 6. And the Sonorous 3 presents 6 to 7 footsteps. On this scale, I consider the HD6XX and the LCD-1 as the average benchmark. That is, their 6 to 7 footsteps is the standard by which I judge any other headphones. Thus, on this scale, the NDH20 would be considered below average and Sundara above average. The Sonorous 3 falls squarely into the average category. I believe, based upon all my listening tests, that this is an accurate representation. The Sonorous 3 will not provide an abundance of details, but it will render the obvious. Final Audio claims that the Sonorous 3 has a vast soundstage. I don't know what Final Audio's definition of vast soundstage is, but it's clearly not mine. The Sonorous 3 has about average to maybe above average soundstage. It's not vast or expansive. It's about what you would expect from a well-tuned, closed-back headphone. Vocals and instruments always sound clear. They have an airy presentation. 
The Sonorous 3 does have depth and width, which I consider to be factors in presentation of placement, not soundstage. In other words, you can have average soundstage yet still hear instruments separated from each other, some closer and some further away. That, in my opinion, is what the Sonorous 3 does. Let's compare with other headphones. As with my detail test, the soundstage test also has a scale. The Odyssey Mobius and All Beats headphones have claustrophobic soundstage. The NDH20 and the ATH M60X have below average soundstage. The HD6XX and LCD1 have average soundstage. The Sivka Phoenix, Emotiva GR1, and Ultrasone Pro 1480i have average to maybe above average soundstage depending on the particular recording. The Hi-Fi Man Sundara, Aventone Planar, Austrian Audio Hi X55 and X65, and the LCD2 Classic have above average soundstage. The Hi-Fi Man Diva has wide soundstage. And the Sennheiser HD800S has super wide soundstage. On this scale, I use the HD6XX and the LCD1 as my average standard. Anything above or below is judged accordingly. The Sonorous 3 seems to present soundstage that is wider than the HD6XX, but more narrow than the Sundara. This, I think, would place it somewhat similar to the Ultrasone Pro 1480i. Final Audio says that the Sonorous 3 has a monitor-like sound and natural flatness and a balanced sound. These are various and different descriptions, and they're also contradictory. I don't think that the Sonorous 3 is actually flat, and I don't know what Final Audio's definition of monitor-like sound actually is. The Sonorous 3 does have aspects of some neutrality. Mid-bass seems to be close to neutral. Treble is also close to neutral, yet has a slight emphasis in the mid-treble area. The mids are forward, and then there's also a sub-bass roll-off. All of this leads me to say that this headphone has a balanced sound signature, not a neutral or flat or monitor-like one, at least in my opinion. Vocals and instruments seem clear and separated. There is at least average clarity throughout the frequency range. The Sonorous 3 has about average detail and slightly above average soundstage. But it also has the capacity to render depth and width, resulting in elements seeming far or near, depending on the recording. In my experience, orchestral and classical music worked quite well with the Sonorous 3. Hip-hop and bass-heavy genres, not so much. Modern pop and rock is perfectly acceptable on this headphone. Jazz tracks may sound a bit less lively considering the sub-bass roll-off. As you know, bass is not everything. Well, not everything to everybody. A lot of modern songs use too much of bass, and of course, not everybody wants a bassy headphone. If you prefer a balanced sounding headphone, then the Sonorous 3 might be very compelling for you. If, on the other hand, you're looking for more detail, soundstage, bass, treble, clarity, then you do have other alternatives. I think reviewers should regularly do comparisons of products they review. That's the only way to put things into perspective. It bothers me that reviewers won't spend $10 on a passive AB switch and commit a few hours to verifying their initial impressions. Here, we will compare the Sonorous 3 against alternatives. I decided to pit this headphone against the HD6XX, the NDH20, and the NAD HP50. I used the stock accessories for all headphones. I plugged them into my passive AB switch, which itself was plugged into my RME ADI2 DAC. I volume matched to the best of my ability. I listened to my test playlist. The HD6XX has sub bass that is similar to the Sonorous 3. It's a little bit rolled off, but still audible. Mid bass emphasis seems to be very similar as well. However, what is abundantly obvious is that the Sonorous 3 is clearer in the bass region. It has greater separation of sub bass from mid bass. Mid bass impact is a little bit harder on the HD6XX. Transience is noticeably longer on the HD6XX. The mids are closer to neutral on the 6XX. Vocal sibilance is not emphasized on the 6XX, unlike on the Sonorous 3. Vocal grain is also smoother on the 6XX. Vocals appear closer to the ears are more intimate on the 6XX. The Sonorous has more airiness, greater separation of elements in a track. Vocals are further ahead of instruments on the Sonorous 3. There is a slight difference in energy in the treble region between these headphones. The 6XX seems to have just a hint less upper treble emphasis. It's not a significant deviation, but it's perceptible. What is pretty stark, however, is that the Sonorous has greater separation of instruments, more clarity, and less intimate presentation overall. 
The Sonorus has about as much detail as the 6XX, but wider soundstage. The NDH20 has slightly more sub-bass than the Sonorus 3, but not by much. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is noticeably greater on the Sonorus. Mid-bass slam is very similar between these headphones. The Sonorus has greater clarity and detail in the bass region. The mids are different in a few respects. The NDS20 has a sibilance roll-off compared to the Sonorus. The Sonorus 3 has a marginal emphasis of this detail. Vocal grain seems to be similar, that is, both headphones accentuate grain slightly. The NDH20 presents vocals noticeably closer to the ears, more intimately. The Sonorous has greater separation and detail in the mids. The NDH20 appears to have a slight emphasis in treble, around the mid to upper treble region. The emphasis is similar to the Sonorous, but not quite the same. Indeed, the Sonorous has smoother rendition of treble instruments, greater separation and clarity compared to the NDH20. The NDH20 always made instruments sound intimate and somewhat veiled. The Sonorous has greater detail retrieval and noticeably greater soundstage. The NAD HP50 has slightly greater sub bass emphasis than the Sonorous. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is similar. Clarity is also similar, but I think the Sonorous 3 has a bit more of it. Mid bass impact is slightly harder on the Sonorous 3. Both headphones appear to have similar mids. Both headphones accentuate vocal sibilance in very comparative degrees. Vocals are more intimate on the HP50, however. Separation of instruments and vocals is greater on the Sonorous. Presentation of vocal grain is hard to distinguish between these headphones. The HP50 has slightly more neutral treble presentation than the Sonorous 3. The Sonorous has a marginal emphasis starting in the mid-treble region. Separation of instruments, clarity, and detail is greater on the Sonorous 3. Timbre is similar. Neither headphone sounds harsh, even at high volumes. The Sonorous and HP50 have similar detail retrieval. The Sonorous has wider soundstage. My favorite part of reviewing is doing comparisons. That's when I get to hear differences, if any, among products. If there's one thing that is abundantly clear to me, it's this. You are far more likely to hear noticeable differences among headphones and IEMs than you ever will from modern DACs and AMs. Here, it is patently obvious that the Sonorous 3's performance and sound signature is generally different from the competition, at least the one that I compared here. Compared to the popular HD6XX and even the hyped NDH20, the Sonorous 3 provides greater clarity, soundstage, detail, and resolution. Compared to the HP50, the Sonorous has some similarities, but the HP50 has an overall slightly warmer sound signature. All four headphones are good at what they do, and you may find yourself gravitating towards one, all, or none of them. I enjoy listening to different headphones, particularly when I can experience my music in alternative ways. Having the same sound signature or performance from all of my headphones or IMs is very boring. And restricting yourself to one specific sound signature, neutral, bassy, analytical, or balanced, may deprive you of the joy you could have by listening in a different way. That's why I encourage people to consider products that may be outside their comfort zone. You may completely hate a new sound signature, or you may fall in love with it. And until you actually listen for yourself, you never really know. Final Audio's products are a jumbled mess of categories and subcategories. I have a few of their products and generally appreciate their craftsmanship. The Sonorous 3 is the fourth Final Audio product I've used, and I can say that at least Final Audio isn't afraid to try different tunings among their product lines. With the Sonorous 3, you get a balanced sound signature. There's a sub bass roll off, but a fairly neutral mid bass. The mids are forward, vocals are clear and separated from instruments. There's a slight emphasis in vocal sibilance. Treble is close to neutral, but with a marginal push in the mid to upper treble region. The Sonorous has average detail retrieval, slightly above average soundstage, clarity, separation, and placement. This brings us to value. I think that at the current $300 price, the Sonorous 3 is value, but $400 seems a bit steep for what you get. I appreciate Final Audio's unique design on the Sonorous 3. The headphone is plastic and metal, but it feels completely sturdy. I'm a big fan of the ball joint system on the ear cups. It makes sense and is a simple solution to conforming ear cups to faces. The cable is perfectly suitable. But oddly, Final Audio did not include any other accessories. Even the packaging is surprisingly bare bones. The Sonorous 3 does provide a sound signature that might be pleasant to you. 
It does not have the warmth and darkness of the HD6XX, nor the overall mid-centric smoothness and intimacy of the NDH20, or the combination of slightly warm and stereo-like presentation of the NAD HP50. If you're looking for a headphone that has average detail, slightly above average soundstage, good placement, clarity, and separation, with a sound signature that is vocal forward, then the Sonorous 3 might be worth considering. There's a lot of uniqueness about the Sonorous 3, particularly in this price region. It may not blow your socks off, but it certainly has aspects that I think a lot of people could appreciate.